Good morning. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. And today I want to talk about evangelism. And this method I call experience God evangelism. And how to help people experience God and bring them to Jesus. In 1998, 15 years after I became a pastor, an evangelist laid hand on me and immediately I experienced great power like electricity enter me and experienced great love of God fill my heart and very strong peace came into my heart I felt like I was in heaven and I smelled sweet smell Na akasikia arufu ya manikato ikinukia I think from heaven Akadhani kwamba hii imetoka mbinguni I didn't know I can experience God like that Hakujua kwamba anaweza kutambua uwepo wa Mungu kwa kiwango hiyo It wake me up Ikamuamsha that the relationship with God can be so intimate kwamba uwezi ushirika wake na Mungu huwe wa karibu sana that we can have this close relationship with him. And I said, I really want to have this close relationship with God all the time. And experience him all the time. A second thought came to me. I want to be like that evangelist too. Then I can pray for people and they can experience the power and the love of God like that. It opened my eye to ministry. Because in the past I have been just basically preaching the word of God. And now I realize that the ministry in God it's not just preaching a word, but also operation of the Holy Spirit. And which the Bible does talk about. But in the past, I, I never knew it. And I was very excited. Up to today, that God is so good that we can experience Him anytime. In that meeting, I kept praying to God. And on the way home in a public bus, I want to raise my hand to praise God. But it was in a public bus. It's not convenient to raise my hand like that. So I put my hand against the window. So it's not so obvious. And I kept praising God and loving God. And when I was home, I kept praying to God even though it was very late. And after that, every day, I kept a long time praying to God. And one day I cried to Jesus. I said, Lord Jesus, Immediate power went through me. And I said, this is great. I can experience this response right away. So I keep praising God. And I kept experiencing his power. And then in, one day in the meeting, I experienced the joy of the Lord. I was rejoicing all the way. Hallelujah. <laughs> the joy of the Lord. 
I really treasure that. And sana jambo hilo. Now in these few days when I pray for people, some people experience the joy too. Na siku hizi ambazo sipo nani ninapoongea watu, watu wengi hushuhudia ukuu wa Mungu. But in some places I went to, some people were filled with the joy of the Lord and laughed for a long time. Nikiwa niko mitano zingine, watu wengi hushuhudia uwepo wa Mungu na upendo ulio wa kawaida kwa muda mwingi. I really treasure the joy of the Lord. And for the whole meeting, I kept loving God so the joy stays. And when I went home in a public bus, I want to keep the joy because I don't want to lose it. But I could not laugh out loudly. Lakini siwezi kama kama gani? I could not laugh out loudly. Lakini siwezi kucheka kwa sauti kubwa. So I did this. Sasa nini? Hiyo mambo inanifinya tu ninafanya tu namna hii. In my heart I was loving God. Ndani ya moyo wangu ninampenda Yesu. And let the joy keep coming. Na huo upendo uendelee kukuja na kutiririka. And when I went home I want to keep the joy I kept praying. Na ninapoenda nyumbani ninataka kwamba nikaweze kuweka hiyo furaha huo upendo ukaweze kuendelea. And every day after that. Na baada ya siku baada ya nyingine. Now any time I think of Jesus. Kila wakati ninapofikiria juu ya Yesu. Even in the middle of the night. Hata kama ni katikati ya usiku. Any time I think of Jesus, His joy will come to me. And His love will come to me too. And I feel a power going through me. It makes me feel very comfortable. And very joyful and loved. And I said that is great. Nikasema kwamba hiyo ni jambo la jambo jambo kuu. And I I said this is wonderful to have this close relationship with God. Sema hiyo ni jambo nzuri kwa ajili ya kuwa na uhusiano ulio wa karibu pamoja na Mungu. And a few days after that experience, na siku chache baada ya kushuhudia hayo, someone asked me to pray for her. Mtu mwingine akaomba kwamba nikaweze kuomba pamoja naye. To lay hand on her and cast out demons. Kwa ajili ya kuwekelea mikono juu yake na kukemea nguvu za mapepo. And the person said she experienced power when I prayed for her. And I didn't realize that that I can have the power of God so soon. Na mimi si kutambua kwamba ninaweza kuwa katika uwepo wa Mungu uwe uwepo wa Mungu ukafanye kazi ndani yangu hivyo karibuni. Soon after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I prayed for some people. Baada ya kushuhudia nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu naombea watu and two of them cry for one hour. Na watu wengine wakapika nduru wawili wakapika nduru karibu disani moja. They said all the burdens went away and all the sadness went away. Wakasema kwamba uzuni uliokuwa ndani yao na miziko ikawaondokea. And I said this is wonderful. Nikasema hii ni ajabu. Then I can bless people like that. Kwa hivyo ninaweza kubariki watu kiwango hiyo. And so I pray for every member in my church. Kwa hivyo kwa ajili ya huduma ambayo mimi ninaongoza huwa ninaombea kila mtu kanisani. And also when I went out to preach, I also asked if I could pray for the people. Kwa hivyo ninapoenda nje kwa ajili ya huduma huwa ninauliza kama ninaweza kuombea watu wengine pia. And I came across miracles all the time. Na kila wakati huwa ninashuhudia miujiza ikitendeka kila wakati. People were healed of sickness. Watu wanaponywa kwa magonjwa. And the first time was like this. Na siku ya kwanza ilikuwa namna hii. I pray for some people in a church. Niwaombea watu kanisa mahali pengine. And I after asked them what they experienced afterwards. Na nikawauliza kile wame wamehisi wakati wa maombi. And a woman jumped up and said, Na mke mwingine akaruka juu na akasema, My back is healed. Oh, hii mgongo yangu ilikuwa inauma lakini sasa imepona. And and a woman jumped up and said her shoulder pain was healed. This opened my eyes that the miracles of in a biblical time can still happen today. And also when I pray for people I noticed I felt some power between my hand and the persons. Nikisikia kwamba kuna nguvu ambazo ziko katikati ya mkono wangu. And I asked the person. 
and ask the person did they experience anything. And I noticed what the experience is similar to my experience. Later I have the chance to pray for non-Christians. And they too can experience the peace or the joy of the Lord. Or burdens go away. And I ask them what they have experienced. So they told me that they experience a peace or their burdens go away. And I said to them, God has blessed you like that. Because God is very real. Do you please turn uh, and then I said, do you want Jesus to continue to bless you? And they, they said, yes. And I told them the gospel and brought them to Jesus. Now, in this way, I have brought many people to Jesus. Sometimes people said, I have a friend, I try to bring him or her to Jesus, and they were not willing to believe. And I asked the person to bring this friend to me. And I told the person, God is very real and he can bless you right now. And I asked the person if he's willing for me to pray for him. He said he was willing. And after I prayed for them, I asked them what they experienced. And they experienced, they said they experienced, uh, you know, the peace or the comfort of the Lord. And I said, God has blessed you like this. Do you want to continue to be blessed by Jesus? And then he was willing and I brought that person to Jesus. Now this has happened over and over again. In my church there were many miracles. People share about miracles all the time. Watu ushiriki amambo amenahusu miujiza kila wakati. And one of my church members asked me to visit her mom. She said that her mom is, is, has terminal sickness, has uh, terminal sickness that she will die. She uh, will die. The, the mother will die. That she had a heart attack, a stroke. Diabetes, diabetes, Ojoskari, kidney failure, and she will die of kidney failure. failure. And so I went to the mother and prayed for her and asked her what she experienced. And she says she felt comfort. I said, are you willing to believe in Jesus so that he can continue to bless you? But she said she was not willing. Because she had, because she had worshipped Buddha many years. Now when I went to visit her, I also prayed for every church, uh, every family member there. And they all experienced the Holy Spirit. I brought all of them to Jesus. Now, I want to say at this point, the power of the Holy Spirit is not just for some people. It's for every person. If you are willing to put down all your sins and love God for as long as you can every day and the presence of God will be strong upon you. And you will have miracles similar to that too. 
And later I would, you know, pray for each one of you. Na kila wakati nitaunaombea kila mmoja wenu. And help you how to maintain the presence of God. Na kukusaidia vile unaweza kutunza uwepo wa Bwana. But you must have an attitude of appreciation of God. Lakini lazima uwe na nia na moyo wa kumshukuru Mungu. And hunger for God. Na uwe na tamanio kwa ajili ya Bwana. You know for me for the whole day long Unajua mimi kwa ajili ya siku yote I try to love Jesus all the time Huwa ninatamani huwa napenda kumpenda Yesu kila wakati Even now when I'm preaching Hata saa hii wakati tunahubiri hivi My heart just like Jesus Oh moyo wangu unampenda tu Yesu Appreciate Jesus Ninahubiri Yesu And on the way here I remind the people in the car Ah kwa njia nilif Kumbusha watu kwa tulipokuwa kwa gari try to pray all the way jaribuni kuomba kila wakati the many people are not used to that watu wengi hawajazoea hiyo hata wewe unajua hujazoea hiyo many people just live in the world watu wengi huishi tu katika dunia and don't think much about god hawafikirii sana juu ya mungu except when they are in a church lakini tu wanapokuwa kanisani ndio wanajua oh kumbe mungu yuko but We want to love God all day long. Nataka tumpende Mungu siku yote katika maisha. And the presence of God will be strong upon you. Na uwepo wa Mungu utakuwa juu yako na nguvu. So now I go back to that woman I pray for the old woman I pray for. Sasa nirudi kwa yule mama niliyemwombea. She was not willing to believe in Jesus because she worshiped Buddha many years. Huyo mama hakuwa na nia ya kumwamini Mungu kwa sababu ameabudu sanamu ya Buddha kwa miaka mingi. But I, in the process I pray for every of her family member and I brought them to Jesus. And I pray for this woman a number of times. And I was very busy I did not visit her anymore. But half a year later, I suddenly receive a call from the daughter. Simu ya rununu kutoka kwa mtoto wake. The daughter told me to visit her mom right away. Oh, huyo msichana akaniambia kwamba inasaili nimtembele mama yake haraka iwezekanavyo. She said, you know, I asked her what happened. Why why her mother wants me to come? Nikamuuliza huyu mama ananitaka na lengo gani? She said the mom in that day suddenly said to her. Come again. She said that her mom said to her suddenly. Oh, akasema kwamba mama yake amemtuma. Why didn't Pastor Yib come today? Kwa nini Pastor Yib asikuje leo? Now I haven't gone there for half a year. Ni mwaka nusu ya mwaka umeisha sijaenda hapo. But she asked the question as if I've been there a few days ago. Kina akauliza swali ni kama nimekuwa hapo tu juzi. Why didn't Pastor Yib come today? Kwa nini Pastor Yib asikuje tu hata kama ni leo? I haven't gone for half a year. Amemaliza nusu ya mwaka kabla hajaenda. So the daughter immediately asked me to come. Sasa msichana yake huyo binti yake akaniomba kwamba nikaweze kufika hapo. And I pray for her. Na nikamwombea. And asked her how she felt. Nikamuuliza ulijisikia aje? She felt she said she felt great comfort. Akasema kwamba alijisikia akiwa amefarijika sana. Because of the kidney failure. Kwa sababu ya figo iliyokuwa imekoma kufanya kazi. She was in pain all the time. Alikuwa kila wakati yeye ana uchungu tu. So I pray for her again and ask her what she experienced. Nikamwombea na nikamuuliza anajisikia aje? And she says she experienced comfort again. Akasikia akasema kwamba anajisikia kufarijika tena. And I asked her, did Buddha help you like that? Did Buddha help you like that? Akamuuliza wewe umekuwa ukifuata Buddha kila wakati ukiabudu Buddha. Buddha huyu amekuwa akikusaidia kwa hii kiwango. And she said, no, Buddha didn't help her. Akasema hata huyo Buddha hajawahi kunisaidia. I said Jesus have, has helped you like that. Nikamwambia kwamba Yesu ndiye amekusaidia hiyo kiwango. Do you want to believe in the real God or the false God? Sasa unataka kuamini Mungu wa kweli ama Mungu wa uongo? And she said she was willing to believe in the real God. Akasema kwamba mimi natamani kumwamini Mungu aliye Mungu wa kweli. So I I brought her to Jesus. Nikamuelekeza kwa Yesu and I bap, and I baptized her. Nikampatiza and the miracle is The miracle is. Na mujiza ukawa kwamba. Na please look here. Please look here. This is very important. Anasema kwamba mwachana na mambo ya watoto mwangalio kwa hiyo mambo ni ya muhimu. That was the last day that woman was totally conscious for the whole day. 
That was the last day. He was, she was totally conscious for the whole day. I hiyo ndio siku ambayo huyu mama alikuwa na ameumia kwa siku yote. After that day, baada ya siku hiyo, part of the day she was unconscious. So, she, was, she was unconscious without feeling not asleep or deep sleep, you know, sasa, not knowing what's happening. Sasa ikawa kwamba ako katika hali ambao halali hajisikii vizuri. So that was the day, the last day she was totally conscious for the whole day. Sasa hiyo ndio hiyo siku ya siku ya mwisho huyu mama kutokusikia akiwa na amani na furaha na kujisikia vizuri. And she suddenly asked for me na akaniuliza I believe it's a work of God to remind her about me. Kamwambia kwamba hiyo inaona kwamba ni kazi ya Mungu kumfanya yeye anikumbuke mimi. And she asked for me while she was conscious. Akaniuliza ni kwa nini sijakuwa nikisikia vizuri? So that she has a chance to believe in Jesus. Kwamba akaweze kuwa na nafasi ya kumwamini Yesu. And after that day the daughter said, Na baada ya hiyo siku, huyo bindi akasema, that she told her children and her grandchildren Believe in Jesus. Jesus is good. Kao kwamba anaambia watoto wake na watoto wa watoto wake kwamba wamwamini Yesu kwa sababu Yesu ni mwema na ni wa kweli. And one night in the middle of the night, siku moja usiku wa manane, she opened her eyes, akafungua macho yake, and she looked at the ceiling from one side to another, na akaangalia ceiling board kutoka pande moja hadi pande nyingine, and she was smiling, na akawa anacheka na kutapasamu. The daughter felt very comforted. Huyo msichana akajisikia ako na furaha ya ajabu. Because of her pain and sickness, kwa sababu ya uchungu na maumivu yake, she did not talk much for a long time. Hakuweza kuongea kwa muda mrefu. And she has not laughed for a long smile for a long time. Na amemaliza muda mwingi hajawahi kucheka wala kutabasamu. But on that night when the mother looked at the ceiling from one side to another and she smiled. Lakini siku hiyo mama yake alipokuwa anaangalia juu ya ya paa ya nyumba na kurekesha maji pande nyingine akawa anacheka. The daughter felt comforted. Sasa msichana akawa amefurahia sana. She was so happy to see her mother smile. Kawa amefurahia kwa kuona mama yake akiwa anacheka na kutapazamu. The fact that she was looking from one side to another side and smiling. Sababu tu kwamba alikuwa anaangalia juu ya paa ya nyumba pande hii na pande hii na kucheka. Made the daughter believe that she was seeing some vision. Sasa bindi yake akaamini kwamba kwa mtazamo huo labda kuna maono fulani ambaye alikuwa anayaona. It could be a vision of heaven, angels or Jesus. Naweza kuwa ni maono ya kibinguni ama ya malaika wa Bwana ama maono ya Yesu. And the whole family believe in Jesus. Sasa familia yote ikaamini Yesu. Now this is one example of me doing evangelism by laying hand on people and praying. Sasa huu ni mfano wa mimi kwa kufanya uingilisi na kuwekelea mikono juu ya watu na Mungu akijidhihirisha. Now in a time I visited a uh, family uh, you know a family that the daughter comes to the church. Ah uh, siku moja nikatembelea msichana ambaye huwa anakuja kanisani. And when I ring the doorbell na nilipofinya mlango wa kengele ya ya gate You know the the daughter believed in Jesus. Mustana ana mimi ndani ya Yesu. But the family have idols at home. Lakini nayo jamii ina masanamu na vitugo zingine za wanao wazia. And next to the idol there were two electric candles. Na kando na hiyo kulikuwa na taa zingine za stima. Because you know for Chinese they usually put candles uh, or, or burning incense uh, with the, and a uh, uh, idol. Unajua kulingana na kule India huwa wanaweka sanamu na vitu zingine za kuabudu katika milango zao. And the moment I ring the doorbell, wakati nilifinya tu kengele ya mlangoni, both candles burn out instantly. Sasa zile taa za kuwaka zile zikasima mara moja zote mpapa zikachomeka. And then the grandmother saw that the light burn out instantly when I ring the doorbell. Sasa mama akaona kwamba muta amefinya kengele na hizo taa zimechomeka. And then also later when they replace the light bulb sasa wakati waliponunua zingine wakaziweka they burn out too tena zikachomeka tena so the grandmother said this is a miracle sasa nyanya akawatela kasema hii sasa hii kwa hii boma huu ni muujiza there must be something about jesus lazima kuwe na kitu tofauti ambao zinamhusu yesu and the whole family believe in jesus na familia yote ikaamini yesu Let me tell you we we still living in the age of miracles. Nakwambia kwamba bado tunaishi katika enzi ya miujiza. Don't think that it's not 
You know, it's not real. In these few days when I pray for different people, many people felt burdens go away and they feel very light. And there were people who saw visions of Jesus. Or they heard God talking to them. I want to tell you, God is very real. And Jesus has promised us, Na yesu ametuaidi, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive power to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. Let me ask you, do you believe in that miracles are still real today? Could you raise your hand if you believe that miracles are still real today? Okay, thank God, thank God. A second question. How many of you pray for people and then they experience miracles? When you pray for someone, well, thank God there are so many, I mean, still so many hands. But I see there are less hands than before. Now, but why don't people, everyone, every Christian have many miracles? Because we just don't have the habit of praying for people. Because And very often we don't really believe that miracles can happen. And I hope you all believe God is very real. God loves us all the time. Mungu anatupenda kila wakati. He wants to bless us all the time. Anataka kutubariki kila wakati. So we can live in the presence of God all the time. Kwamba kila wakati tukaweze kuishi katikati ya uwepo wa Mungu kila wakati. And carry the power of God to pray for people. Na tupokee nguvu za Mungu kwa ajili ya kuombea watu. And lead them to Jesus. Na kuwaelekeza kwa Yesu. Do you want to do that? Natamani kufanya hayo? Do you have compassion on the people around you? Do you want them saved? Do you want this country changed? People said the percentage of Christians in Kenya is very high. But people said Many of these so-called Christians don't go to church. Or their lifestyle doesn't show that they are Christians. So we need a revival here. Revival is not just people experiencing the Holy Spirit. Revival is when people really have a close relationship with God and willing to dedicate your life to evangelism and raising up the spiritual life of people. So, do you want a revival? Let me tell you, the revival can come to your heart right now. You don't have to wait for God to do something for you to be revived. Some people have this concept, oh God, when will the new revival come and they think God will come the revival? They think that God will not, do not want to bring the revival. But actually, God wants to revive us any time. When you just say, Lord, I really need you. I want to repent on my sins. I want to give my life to you. I want to have a close relationship with you. And bring people to Jesus. And bring people to love Jesus and follow Jesus. 
nguvu za Yesu You cannot be sure about the revival to the other people. Hawezi kuwa na hakika ya ufufuo kwa ajili ya watu wengine. But you can be sure of the revival to your life. Unaweza kuwa na hakika ya ufufuo kwa ajili ya maisha yako wewe. Even today. Hata leo hii. And you understand that revival is not just experience. And ninasema kwamba ufufuo sio kwa ajili ya kutambuliwa tu. But you really see God as someone very important. Lakini unaona kwamba Mungu kweli yeye ni wa ni wa ni wa hakika na wa kweli. That you are willing to pray all the time. Na unajisikia kwamba unaweza kuomba kila wakati. Because without the presence of God we cannot do much. Kwa sababu pasipo uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu hatuwezi kufanya mambo mengi. That is what Jesus said. He who is in me and I'm in him and he will bear much fruit. Huyo ndio hapo ndio Yesu alisema kwamba aliye ndani yangu na mimi ndani yake atazaa matunda mengi. If he's not in me he cannot do anything. Yuwapo hayuko ndani yangu hawezi kufanya neno lolote. So the first thing is that we really live in the presence of God. Hiyo jambo la muhimu lilio kuu ni kwamba tuishi katika uwepo wa Mungu. And say God is so wonderful. Unasema kwamba huyu Mungu ni Mungu wa ajabu. I want to really give my life to Jesus. Bado kupeana maisha yangu kwa Yesu. Now in many meetings I pray for people. Katika mikutano mingi huwa naombea watu. Now first I'd like to ask you to look at me. Don't look at the children. Amubira um, anasema kwamba wachana na watoto na kokole gavana hata mlejeye ni ukama. Now in in many meetings I pray for the people. Mikutano mingi huwa naombea watu. And told the people to keep loving God. Naambia watu waendelee kumpenda Mungu. And not to look around. Especially after the experience of work of God. Sana sana wakati umetambua umeshuhudia ukuu wa uwepo wa Mungu. But when I turn, when I look around, napoangalia kando kando. I saw these people after the experience of the Holy Spirit Jesus look around. Unaona tu watu wameshuhudia uwepo wa Mungu na wanakaa tu kama wamechanganyikiwa wajui kile wanafanya. Or talk. Wengi wengine uko mtani watu wengine wanaongea and have not much response to God. Na hawana mwitikio wa hakika kwa ajili ya Mungu. In 1998 when I experienced the Holy Spirit, mwaka wa 998 aliposhuhudia uwepo wa Mungu, I really said that is really great. Nilisema kwamba hiyo hakika ni ya ajabu. Then I can have this close relationship with God. Kwamba ninaweza kuwa na uhusiano huu wa karibu na Mungu. And I can handle all my sins. Na ninaweza ku kutambua dhambi zangu zote and when i pray for people i saw so many people heal na ninapoombea watu niliona watu wengi wakipona or demons driven out na I'm, I'm, wengine mapepo yakitoka ndani yao or believe in jesus na wanaamini ndani ya yesu then i said god you can change my life so much nikasema kwamba mungu unaweza kubadilisha maisha yangu zaidi ya hapo and i can be used by god so much kwamba nikaweze kutumika na mungu zaidi i don't know i don't want to waste my life sitaki kupoteza ama kuharibu maisha yangu i don't know i don't want to waste your work in me sitaki kazi iliyo ya kazi yako iliyo ndani yangu ikaweze kuharibika so i really responded with my whole life kwa hivyo nikaitikia na moyo wangu wote and i hope that you You believe that too. Na naamini kwamba hata wewe unaamini hayo. When you know that God is real. Ukijua kwamba Mungu yeye ni wa kweli na wa hakika. He can use you greatly. Anaweza kukutumikia kwa njia kuu. When you are revived by God and really follow God. Wakati umefufuliwa na Mungu na kumfuata Mungu. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Unapotafuta kwanza ufalme wa Mungu na haki zake. All these things will be added to you. Hizi vitu zingine zote mtasidishiwa. He will bless your whole life. Yeye tabariki maisha yako yote. Let me tell you I experience blessings all the time. Wacha nikwambie kwamba huwa ninashuhudia baraka za Mungu kila wakati. Let me ask you first how many of you experience blessings from God? Wacha niwaulize ni nani kwenda ambao huwa wanashuhudia baraka za Mungu? They ex you experience help and different kinds of blessing. Could you raise your hand? O, o, kama unashuhudia uwepo wa Mungu na baraka za Mungu kwa njia tofauti unaweza kuinua mkono tu? Okay, thank God. God is working in your life. Okay, anashukuru kwamba Mungu anafanya kazi katika maisha yenu. But I want to tell you that when you follow God more, nataka niwaambie kwamba mnapomfuata Mungu zaidi, there will be more and more blessings. Tutakuwa na baraka zingine za kwa utele. And your life can go higher and higher. Hayo maisha yako yataenda juu na juu na juu zaidi. You know I thank God after experience of the Holy Spirit. Nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu baada ya kutambua uwepo wa Mungu. My ministry was continually raised up by God. Huduma ule Mungu amenipatia ulikuwa unaendelea kuinuliwa na Mungu kwa kila wakati. And I saw many people revive. Na nikaona watu wengi wanainuliwa. 
and God gave me good teaching to na, train people. Mungu mafundisho mazuri kwa ajili ya kufundisha watu. Whenever I go to a place the people say come back again. Hata anapoenda mali watu wanatamani kwamba nirudi tena mali pale. They also say can you go to the other places too? Wanaweza kusema kwamba unaweza kuenda mali pengine tena? God has opened doors for me. Mungu amemfungulia milango ndio sababu wako hapa. And there are people who are greatly touched by the work of God. Na kuna watu ambao wanaguzwa saiti na kuinulia kwa ajili ya kazi ya Mungu. I want to tell you that your life can be raised up like that too. Taka kuambia kwamba maisha yako yanaweza kuinuliwa hivyo pia. Don't despise your life. Usijidharau, usidharau maisha yako wewe. Don't waste your life. Usiharibu maisha yako. If you see somebody throw his wallet his money into the sea the oh, ocean unapoona mtu kwamba amechukua pesa zake na kibeti chake anatupa kwenye bahari you say don't throw it away give it to me unamwambia kwamba usitupe hiyo pesa mimi nahitaji pesa but i tell you many people are not just throwing away money na kwambia kwamba watu wengi sio kwamba wanatupa tu pesa they are throwing away their life lakini wanatupa maisha yao You can be greatly used by God. Unaweza kutumika na Mungu kwa njia kuu. You can bless many people. Unaweza kubarikisha watu wengi. And you can be raised up by God to a high level. Unaweza kuinuliwa na Mungu kwa kiwango cha juu. I like to share with you a few things how God has blessed me. Ah, ninataka kushiriki na nyinyi vitu chache ambazo Mungu amenibariki mimi. To encourage you to hunger for God. Kwa ajili ya kuatia moyo na kuwa shauku na Mungu. I'm 65 years old. Sasa vile unamuona hivi unamuona ni kijana. Ako na But God gives me a sharp mind. Lakini ukimuona hivi akili zake ziko sharp wewe. And a strong body. Na unaona hata mwili wake akifanya hivi misisi inatokea. And I play tennis. Na anapiga ile mpira ya tap shoot. <laughs> And give me the joy of the Lord. Na anampatia furaha ya moyo. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Na roho upako wa roho ya Mungu and great teachings na mafundisho ya ajabu he also gave me a wonderful wife sasa ako na mke unayeitwa mrembo wa ajabu i haven't seen another woman so wonderful as she is hata wala anaona hapa hakuna mrembo kama huyu wake she loves me anapenda huyu mke na kipara yake hii she loves me very much anampenda kabisa but she's also very wise na huyu mwanamke ako na akili si wakelele kelele you know When I go to many places the people said wow your teaching is very very good. Anapoenda kwa sehemu zingine watu wanasema kwamba mafundisho yako ni mazuri sana. But she would tell me how I can improve. Lakini wana huyo mke wake anamwambia kwamba ukitaka kubadilisha enda njia hii. When I see people I like to take her along. Ah uh, anapoona watu anapenda kushiriki na wao muda mrefu. And she would tell me what she has observed. Naye naye mke wake anamwambia kulingana na vile aliona wale watu. What she has heard from that person. Kile amesikia kutoka kwa mtu. That there are things that I have missed. Na hata kama yeye amefanya makosa mke wake anamwambia hapa mzee au kuenda poa. She's so wise that she can help me in my ministry. Ako na hekima nyingi kwamba anaweza kumsaidia anamwonyesha tena. But she always does it in a gentle way. Lakini anapomwambia anamwambia kwa roho ya upole sio kum And God has given me the humility. Naye Mungu amempatia unyenyekevu. Every time when she says suggest something to me. Kile wakati anapomwambia wazo kumfikia. Or when other people suggest something to me. Watu wengine wanapopendekeza mambo kunihusu. I always say thank you for your suggestion. Ninasema kwamba mke wangu asante kwa mawazo yako. Because if I want to go higher, kwa sababu ninapotaka kwenda juu, I have to accept the suggestions of people. Lazima nikubali mashauri ya watu wengine. God has, has been raising me up, up higher and higher. Mungu amekuwa akimuinua juu na juu zaidi. And he has provided for me so I can go to different countries. Naye amenisaidia kwamba ninaweza kuenda kwa mataifa mengine kama sahii yako Kenya. And open up, up open up doors for a um, ministry for me. Na anamfungulia milango kwa ajili ya huduma kwa ajili yake. Now when I do this I don't think of expanding myself. Ninapofikiria hivi sijioni mimi mwenyewe ama ninajaribu. All these are the work of God. Haya yote ni kwa ajili ya makusudi ya kazi ya Mungu. It's not me. Sio yeye. God chose me when I was weak. Mungu alimchagua alipokuwa kwamba yeye ni mdhaifu. God chose me when I have committed many sins. Oh Mungu alimuita wakati alikuwa ametenda dhambi nyingi kabisa. But God totally changed my life. Mungu akabadilisha tu maisha yangu. And he can do the same to you too. Na anaweza kutenda haya hata kwa ajili ya wewe ambao umesikia. It's not us who are worthy. 
Sio sisi tulio bora. It's God who want to raise up people. Ni Mungu aliye na moyo wa kuinua watu. So here I motivate you to be revived by God. Kwa hivyo hapa ninakupatia changamoto kwamba ukaweze kufufuliwa and to be willing to do evangelism. Na kuwa kwamba una moyo kwa ajili ya kufanya uingilisi. Now here I talk about this method called experience God evangelism. Sasa nina hapa ninasema kwamba kushuhudia uingilisi wa kiungu. Now the Biblical basis is that people can experience God's work. Ukweli wa Biblia ni kwamba watu wanaweza kushuhudia kazi ya Mungu. And I'm going to give you some Bible verses. Sasa tutawapatia vifungu vya Biblia. Please write this Bible verses Sasa down. Sasa chukua kalamu kama una kalamu uende kwa duka ununue saa hii atukaange na watu awaandike. You don't have to look up the pers- uh, verses in the Bible. Hata uh, usiposoma kwa Biblia saa hii because you won't have time to do that. Kwa sababu hatuna muda wa kufanya hii. You just write down and then remember these verses. Sasa uandike haya na ukumbuke maandiko ya noble kalamu zirwanyi. The first is John 14:27. Yohana 14:27. Yohana 14:27. There it says that peace I leave with you my peace I give you. Ah, uh, Biblia inasema kwamba amani yangu ninawapatia amani yangu idadumu pamoja nanyi. There it says that Jesus can give us peace. Biblia inasema kwamba Yesu anaweza kutupatia amani. There are many people that I pray for. Kuna watu wengi ambao mimi huwa nawaombea. Then they experience calmness and peace. Na wanashuhudia utakazo na amani. Have you experienced that when you pray or praise God? Na uliza jinyi mnapoomba Mungu mnashuhudia mambo haya? Yes, that's very common. Hiyo ni jambo ambalo ni la kawaida. Now when you know the, what we experience, I'm going to tell you more verses. Unapo Tambua kile unashuhudia atakuongezea mistari mingine. It has a few use, uses. A few uses. A few ways you can use that. Wachache wanaweza kutumia mambo haya. First, you can use it to help yourself to have a closer relationship with God. Anaweza kutumia kwamba uwe na uhusiano ulio karibu na yeye na Mungu. When you pray and you feel peace coming to you, unapoomba na usikie kwamba amani inakuja ndani yako. You know God's presence strong upon you. Unajua kwamba uwepo wa Mungu umekujilia kwa nguvu zote. And then you open your heart more to love God. Na unafungua moyo wako kwa ajili ya kumpenda Mungu. More peace will come to you. Amani iliyotimilivi itakuja ndani yako. And then you know how to raise up the You know the presence of God when you pray. Na unajua jinsi unaweza kuinua uwepo wa Mungu unapokuwa katika maombi. When I pray to God, ninapoomba kwa Mungu, I will put down all the burdens. Ninaweka mizigo yote kando. All the things I worry about. Yale mambo yote ambayo huwa yananisumbua na yaweka kando. And relax my whole person. Na sasa ninatulia mwili wangu wote. And I will enter a deeper and deeper na peace. Na ninazama ninazama katika uh, afra. So you want to enter a deeper peace when you pray. Sasa unataka ukaribishe amani nyingi unapoomba. And you also want to experience the other work of God stronger and stronger. Na unataka pia kushuhudia nguvu za Mungu zikiwa na nguvu na nguvu na nguvu zaidi. Another verse is Matthew 11:28. Ah, msalimu mwingine ni Mathayo 11:28. Mathayo 11:28. Come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I'll give you rest. Joni kwangu nyinyi nyote walio wanaosumbuliwa na kulemewa na mizigo mizito nami nitawapumzisha. This is what many people experience. Hii ni mambo ambayo watu wengi hushuhudia. They feel burdens go away. Wanajisikia kwamba mizigo inawaondokea. They feel very light, no burdens. Wanajisikia wamekuwa kwamba wamekuwa wepezi hawana uzito tena. So you can use that too when you pray yourself. Sasa unaweza kutumia hiyo pia unapoomba wewe mwenyewe. Then you can experience more and more peace. Sasa utashuhudia amani iliyo nyingi. And the burdens go away. Na misigo itakuondokea. And then you know that the, you know the presence of God is becoming stronger. Na unajua kwamba uwepo wa Mungu unaendelea kuwa na nguvu zile otimilivu. And you can also help other people to experience God more. Na wewe unaweza kusaidia watu wengine wakaweze kushuhudia Mungu zaidi. And you this to do evangelism. Na unasaidi kufanya uinjilisti. So when you realize the work of the Holy Spirit, unapotambua kazi za Roho Mtakatifu, the uses are matumizi ni One it helps you to go deeper into strong in God's presence. Inakusaidia kuzama katika uwepo wa Mungu. 
Second, you can help other people or the whole church to go into the deeper presence of God. Number ya pili, inaweza kukusaidia wewe usaidia washirika wa kanisa wazame katika uwepo wa Mungu. And number three, you can use it for evangelism. Number ya tatu, unaweza kusaidia kwa inaweza kusaidia kwa ajili ya kufikia watu na uinjilisti. And number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Na jambo la nne, inaweza kukusaidia kuinua watu katika maisha ya Ukristo, maisha ya kiroho. Okay, another verse is Romans 5:5. The second part it says that the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. There it says that the Holy Spirit can pour the love of God into our hearts. That is what I experienced in 1998. And every time I pray now, na kila wakati sasa ninapoomba, I can feel the love of God every time. Nina upendo wa Mungu kila wakati. I can feel the joy of the Lord every time. Nina kusikia furaha ya Mungu kila wakati. Life become much more enjoyable. Sasa maisha inakuwa kwamba ina furaha ya kushangilia kila wakati. I hope you hunger for that. Nina jikia kwamba uko na tamaa ya ya mambo haya. Then you really say yes I want that. Sasa unasema kwamba kweli ninatamani. And then Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9. Saburi 16 bas mstari wa 8 Saburi 16 mstari wa 8 hadi wa 9. That I've said the Lord always before me. Ah nimeona Bwana mbele yangu kila wakati. And then my heart is glad, my tongue rejoices and my body will rest secure. Moyo wangu unafurahia, mwili wangu unafurahia, nayo mwili there is says that in the presence of God, katika uwepo wa Mungu, my heart will be joyful. Moyo wangu utafurahia. And my body will rest secure. Naye mwili wangu utakuwa katika ulinzi wa ajabu. Then my body can rest. Naye mwili wangu utatulia na kupumzika. And I can feel comfort. Nami nitasikia kufarijika. Now this is talking about God can bless our body. Many people say they feel the body very light. Or comfort to the, comes to the body. Now some people say, well, well, God's word is just for the spirit, right? Why not? Why, why for the body? But we realize that God created a body. So he can bless our body too. And also the Bible says that Jesus can heal the sick. So God can bless the body by healing. And he can make people feel comfort. I share with you two cases very strong. One time I was in a hospital and saw one person going through chemotherapy for cancer. And I asked him how he felt. He said he felt great discomfort. And I share with him about the work of God. Nika shirike na ye kazi ya mungu. And I said, are you willing that I pray for you? Nika muuliza kwamba, unajisikia kwamba ninaweza kuomba pamoja na wewe? And he said he was willing. Haka sema, mimi ninatamani. And then I pray for him. Na nika muompea. And ask him how, what he experienced. Na haka muuliza wajisikia aje. He said, I felt great comfort. Haka sikia, haka sema kwamba, nime sikia kufarijika. So I led them to believe in Jesus and teach him how to pray. Now that was the first time and the last time I saw him. But a few months later, I, her daughter called me. Her father has passed away, but she has found my card. Because the father has told her what she ex he experienced in the hospital. And then the man went home and had pain and he prayed again in Jesus' name and he felt comfort to come to his body. 
And he said Jesus really works. Na akasema kwamba kweli Yesu anafanya kazi. So he was willing to believe in Jesus. Kwa hiyo akawa kwamba ana tamaa ya kumwamini Yesu. So the daughter called me to do the funeral Mas- the, for the, for for her father. Msikana akanipigia simu kwamba nikaweze kufanya utaratibu wa mazishi kwa ajili ya baba yake. And then I I told her, you know, I have prayed for your father to experience God. Nilikamwambia kwamba mimi niliombea baba yako kwamba akahisi Mungu. At that time she was with her sister. Na wakati ule alikuwa na dada yake. And I said, are you willing that I pray for both of you on the phone? Akamuuliza kwamba unajisikia kwamba nikaweze kuomba pamoja nanyi katika simu ya rununu? So she put the phone on speaker mode. Akaweka speaker uh, simu yake kwa loud speaker. And then the both of both of them can hear my prayer. Ili kwamba wote wawili wakaweze kusikia maombi yake. After the prayer I asked them what they experienced. Nilipomaliza kuomba tu kwa simu nikawauliza mmejisikia aje? They said they felt the body floating very light floating. Wakasema kwamba walisikia mili yao ikikuja kuwa mipezi na mipezi zaidi. So I told them this is the work of God. Nikamwambia kwamba hii hakika ni kazi ya Mungu. Are you willing to believe in Jesus? Mnajisikia kwamba mnaweza kuamini Yesu? And I let both of them believe in Jesus. Nikawaelekeza tu kwa simu nikawaelekeza kumwamini Yesu. And they were later baptized in my church. Na wakawa wanafuatilia kwamba waje kanisani. So I have done things like this all the time. Kwa hivyo mambo kama haya ninayofanya mara kwa mara. And one time I pray for a drug addict. Ah uh, siku moja nikaombea mtu ambaye anatumia madawa za kulevya. After the prayer he said Baada ya maombi akasema When you pray for me if I feel more comfort than I took drugs Anasema kwamba unaponiombea ninajisikia nikiwa na amani kuliko vile huwa ninajisikia nikikunywa madawa yangu hii So the presence of God can give greater comfort to his body Kwa hivyo uwepo wa Mungu unaweza kupeana furaha iliyotimilivu kwa ajili ya mili zako When you love God all the time Ukimpenda Mungu kila wakati You also feel comfort to your body Pia utajisikia kwamba mwili wako una furaha na unashangilia And you can sleep better too Na ukilala au lali ile kulala ya kungangana Do you believe that? Naamini mambo hayo Hallelujah Amen But many people believe that watu wengi waamini kwamba but they don't live in that the presence of God hawataki kuishi katika uwepo wa Mungu I hope that you all stay in the presence of God all the time Ninatamani kwamba vile mko hapa nyinyi wote muishi katika uwepo wa Mungu And that passage is Isaiah 61:1 to 3 Sehemu nyingine ya Biblia ni Isaiah 61 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu Isaiah 61 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu There it says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Sasa kwamba roho wa Mungu yu juu yangu. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Maana Bwana amenitia mafuta kwamba nikahubiri habari njema kwa walio maskini. But he has also sent me to heal the broken hearted. Na pia amenituma kutangaza ku kutangaza uhuru kwa walio katika ufungo. To, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Kutangaza uhuru kwa walio fungwa to comfort all who mourn kufarichi wote wanaolia and the oil of gladness instead of mourning mm. oil of gladness instead of mourning na with the verse oil of gladness instead oh. of mourning oh mafuta ya furaha badala ya kilio so here it talks about holy spirit gives us the power to preach the gospel hapa biblia inasema kwamba Roho wa Mungu utupatia nguvu kwa ajili ya kuibuiri injili and also gives people in the healing. Anaopatia pia uponyaji wa mioyo ndani to heal the broken hearted. Kuponya walio na mioyo iliyovunjika. To comfort all who mourn. Kuwafariji wale wanaomboleza and to give them the oil gladness instead of na kuwapatia mafuta ya furaha badala ya kilio. That we all can live in joy and peace. Kwamba sisi wote tukaweze kuishi katika furaha na amani na, na, na kushangilia. Now many Christians live in sadness. Watu wengi wa Kristo hawa mnaona hawa wanakaanga wamehuzunika. Or burdens. Na misiko mizito. And even some minister sometimes are burdened with the ministry. Na watu wengine wanakuwa na miziko hata kwa ajili ya huduma. Now we first need to believe that That ministry belongs to the Lord. Lazima tuamini kwamba huduma ni wa Mungu. Uh-huh. When we have the strong presence of God, God will bless our ministry. Tunapokuwa kwamba tuko katika uwepo wa Mungu ulio na nguvu, Mungu atabariki huduma zetu. We don't have to worry about the work of God. Hadi sasa kujali na kujua 
habari ya huduma wa Mungu. When we submit to God and have a close relationship with him. Tunapochiachilia kwa Mungu na kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na yeye. He will guide us how to do ministry better. Yeye atatuelekeza vile tutafanya huduma kwa njia iliyo bora. And then your ministry will go higher and higher. Na huduma wako utaenda juu na kupanuka zaidi. But when we worry, lakini tunapokuwa kwamba tunakaa tuna kuhuzunika na kushangaa, we won't have much strength. Hatuna nguvu zilio sawa. But some people say it's hard for me to have joy. Watu wengine wanasema kwamba ni vigumu mimi kuwa na furaha. Then you need the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. Sasa unahitaji roho wa Mungu na uwepo wa Mungu to heal your heart. Kwa ajili ya kuponya moyo wako. And to comfort your heart. Na kufariji moyo wako. So that you are totally free. Kwamba uwe ulio na uhuru ulio wa kweli. When I pray every day, napoomba kila wakati. I seek total freedom. Ninachisikia nikiwa huru kweli kweli. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. <laughs> Now notice how I pray it's like from the spirit. Sasa hii anapoomba anaomba kutoka kwa roho. It's not just talking. Sio tu kupiga kelele. It's flowing from my spirit. Ni kutiririka kutoka kwa roho bwana. Hallelujah. Oh yes. It's crying out from the spirit. Ni kulia kutoka ndani ya moyo. Hallelujah. I hope you try to do this. Nafikiria kwamba utajaribu kufanya mambo yako. Kujisikia tu. Kujisikia tu ndani ya Yesu na furaha. Hallelujah. It's not speaking. Sio kuongea. It's flowing from the spirit. Ni roho Mungu kutiririka kutoka kwa moyo. Hallelujah. Kumachukia inja na kuwa na furaha na kushangilia kwa Bwana. Now, sometimes people just pray with the mind, just with the mouth. Saingine watu wengi wanaomba tu mdomo kelele. I'm praying from the spirit. Na mimi ninaomba kutoka na roho. The whole spirit rises to God. Roho wa Mungu anainuka juu kwa ajili ya Mungu. And all the burdens burdens will go away. Hayo misigo yote inakuondokea. And I'll continue to live in the joy of the Lord. Sasa anza kusikukana na kufurahia katika uwepo wa Mungu. And the freedom of God. Na na uhuru wa Mungu. So when we pray for people too many people will be comforted. Napo kwamba tunaombea watu watu wengi wanafarijika. I've seen big men tall men cry when i pray watu wengi watu wanono watu warefu wakiingia tunapoomba so god's presence very real kwa hivyo uwepo wa mungu ni wa kweli kabisa and the bible also said miracles will follow those who believe in him na hiyo biblia husema pia ishara sitaambatana na wote waaminio mark chapter 16 matayo mariko 16 beginning of verse 15 to 20 kuanzia kuanzia mstari wa 15 hadi 20 Ishara sitaambatana na wote waaminio. In verse 15 it says that Jesus told us to go to the whole world and preach to the whole creation. Katika mstari Mariko 16 mstari wa 15 naambia kwamba mtakapoenenda katika dunia yote and he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Yote atakao amini na kupatizwa huyo ataokoka. And then verse 17 miracles will follow those who believe. Na mstari wa 17 kwamba ishara ni miujiza sitaambatana na wote waaminio. And what kind of miracles? Ishara gani? They will cast out demons in Jesus name. Watakemea mapepo kwa jina la Yesu. They lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Watakemea mikono kwa ajili ya wagonjwa na watapokea vya njema. And in verse 20, Shrim mtari wa 20, that God perform miracles to follow them. Mungu atatenda ishara kwa ajili ya kuwafuata. To verify the word of God. Kwa ajili ya kutafautisha kazi ya Mungu. So the miracles are to prove that that the word of God is true. Kwa ajili hiyo, miujiza ni kudhihirisha kwamba neno la Mungu ni la kweli. Now according to this verse who should lay hand on people? Kulingana na mstari huu ni nani aliye na uwezo wa kuwekelea mikono juu ya wagonjwa? They lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. Tunyonyosha mikono juu ya wagonjwa na watapona. So who would do that? Nani atafanya hiyo? Is it just the pastors? Haya swali kwamba hii ni yawahubiri peke yao? Because it says miracles will follow those who believe. Maana Biblia inasema kwamba ishara na miujiza sitaambatana na wote waaminio. So it talks about every person. Kwa hivyo aisemi tu at bishop peke yake ama wachungaji wote wanaoamini. When you lay hands on the sick they will be healed. Unapoweka mikono juu ya wagonjwa bora wewe ni muamini atapona. If you train your members, unapofundisha washirika wako, take care of their sins and demons, kujiachilia kutoka kwa dhambi na mizigo zao, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit, na kujaswa na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu, and then train them to pray for people, na uwafundishe kuombea watu, first pray for each other, 
Wameana nyinyi uko kwenye kwa wenyewe. And then go out to pray for other people. Na muende nje kwa ajili ya kuombea watu wengine. You be able to bring many people to Jesus. Mtaleta watu wengi kwa ajili ya Yesu. And you also hear miracles in your church all the time. Na pia kanisani mwako utashuhudia miujiza kila wakati. And everyone who comes to the church will be excited. Na kila mtu atakaye kuja kanisani hata lala hata sinzia atakuwa na furaha. They will say God is very real. Wanasema kwamba Mungu wa hakika ni wa kweli. God can do wonderful things here. Mungu anaweza kufanya mambo makubwa mahali hapa. And they will be excited when they come to church. Na watu watafurahia wanapokuwa kanisani. And then they can care for the people who come to the church. Na watajali watu wengine wale watakao ingia kanisani. And pray for them. Na kuwaombea to comfort them to kuwapatia changamoto kuwapatia mahimizo or to strengthen strengthen the faith. Ama kuwatia um, kuatia changamoto kwa ajili ya imani yao kukua and also help them to be strong anointing of the holy spirit na kuatia moyo kwamba wawe na uwepo wa Mungu ulio wa juu in my ministry i always train people to take care of their sins and problems kwa hiyo katika huduma wangu kanisani huwa nafundisha watu kujiachilia kutoka kwa dhambi zao and train people to have a strong anointing of the holy spirit na kuwafundisha kuwa na nguvu za Mungu zilio na nguvu zaidi and pray for other people na kuombea watu wengine and i see miracles all the time na ninaona miujiza ikitendeka kanisani kila wakati wowote not only when I pray for people, tu wakati naombea watu, but when the members pray for other people, hata washiriki wanapoombea watu wengine, then evangelism will be done to the, your neighborhood. Sasa uinjilisi utafanyika watu watafikiwa kwa wale walio majirani wenu. With a strong presence of God and with power. Na katika nguvu nyingi zilizo la Mungu na uwezo mkuu. And many people will be comforted. Na watu wengi watafarajika ndani ya maisha yao. Many people in problems will be changed. Watu wengi watakuwa kwamba wanaweza kubadilika kutoka kwa dhambi. Now I have heard testimonies like this. Nimesikia ushuhuda kama huu. When people really follow God. Watu wanapomfuata Yesu kabisa. The farmers found that that in the field the crops have you know have more protection. Haya sikia hii. Kwamba wakati watu wanapomfuata Mungu kwa njia ya ukamilivu, hata mimea yao katika mashamba yao inakuwa iko sawa. And there were less rats in the field. Rats, rats. Mouse, big mouse, rats. Oh, oh sasa zile panya za kukula mimea zinakuwa kwamba haziko tena. God can bless our work. Mungu anakuwa kwamba amebariki kazi zenu. And bless your yourself and your church members. Sasa Mungu anabariki wewe pamoja na washiriki na hata watu walio karibu na wewe. And this whole area. Na hii area yote hii hapa watu watakuwa kwamba amebarikiwa. And your country. Hata nchi ya Kenya pia itakuwa kwamba imebarikiwa. Now I'm going to tell you two Bible verses that will talk about that in the evangelism is not just with word but also with the power of the Holy Spirit and miracles. Unakwambia jamaa vifungo vingine kwamba uinjilisi sio kwa maneno tu na mdomo bali ni kwa uwezo na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu. Romans 15 verses 18 to 19. Warumi 15 mstari wa 18 hadi wa 19. Warumi 15 mstari wa 18 hadi wa 19. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I've said and done by the power of signs and miracles through the power of the Spirit. Sitakuwa na isha huku kwa kusema neno lolote isipokuwa lile ambalo limenenwa na Kristo kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu na ishara na miujiza kupitia kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu wa Bwana. Here Paul talk about that. But what he has done to lead the Gentiles to obey God. Hapa Paul anazungumzia kwa yale ambayo amefanya juu ya kuongoza watu kwa uh, watu wa mataifa kwa kumfuata Mungu by what he has said and what he has done kwa kile amefikia kile amefanya na kile ameona by the power of signs or miracles kwa ajili ya ishara ya miujiza na, na miu, kwa, kwa ajili ya nguvu za ishara ya miujiza through the power of the spirit kupitia kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu so here paul talks about it's not just by word that he preached to god hapa paul anasema kwamba hasungumuzi kwa maneno ya mdomo ya pere pere tu but also with signs and miracles and power of the holy spirit bali ni kwa ishara na miujiza kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu but many people today they didn't realize that we should do evangelism not just with with word but also with miracles and the holy spirit kile watu wengi wakati wa watambui kwamba hawasaidi kufanya tu kazi ya Mungu kwa mdomo bali ni kwa ajili ya kuwa na uwepo wa Mungu 
Roho Mtakatifu wa Bwana ili ishara na miujiza siambatane pamoja na wao. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 2 to 5. Wa Korinto wa kwanza mbili wa Korinto wa kwanza mstari wa pili wa Korinto wa kwanza mbili mstari wa pili hadi wa tano. Wa Korinto wa kwanza mbili mstari wa pili hadi wa tano. There it says that for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Sitamani kujua neno lingine lolote ndani yenu bali Kristo aliyesulubishwa. Now some people will say well then Paul only know Jesus and him crucified. Sasa watu wengine wanasema kwamba Paulo anajua tu Kristo na kusulubishwa kwake. And some people will say well he doesn't know the Holy Spirit then. Na watu wengine wanasema kwamba hajui nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. But then in verse 4 it says. Na mstari wa 4 anasema and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Anasema kwamba katika mambo yangu, from where? Okay, verse 4. Mustari, mustari wa ine. Verse 4 on. Oho. And then verse 5 too, I'll, I'll say verse 5. And then okay, mustari wa ine unasema, siyo kwa maneno tu, kwa maubiri yangu, ambao itawashawishi maneno ya kibinadamu na hekima bali dirisho la Roho Mtakatifu kwa nguvu na kwa uwezo wake. And then in verse 5 says that that your faith should not be in the wisdom of man but in the power of God. Na kwa msaada wa tano unasema kwamba ili imani yenu isiwe kwa maneno tu bali kwa hekima itokanayo na Mungu. So Paul said here that his his preaching is not just with human wisdom with words of human wisdom. Paulo Paulo anasema kwamba kwa maubiri yake sio kwa maneno tu bali hata sio kwa hekima yake tu. But in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. Bali ni kwa aji ya dirisho ya Roho Mtakatifu na nguvu. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. Kwamba Imani yenu isiwe kwa ajili ya mambo ya watu bali kwa nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. So here Paul said that in his preaching it's not just with word. Paul anasema kwamba kwa maubiri yake sio kwa maneno matupu tu. But with the power of the Holy Spirit. Bali ni kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu. And we saw that Jesus and the disciples they all performed miracles. Naona kwamba Yesu pamoja na wanafunzi wote walichudia miujiza katika uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Now there are some people that there are no more miracles today. Kuna watu wengine huwa wanakaa na kufikiria kwamba siku hizi hakuna miujiza na ishara. But in Mark chapter 16 which I we read earlier 15 verse 15 to 20. Lakini Mariko 16 mstari wa 15 hadi 20 wale tulisoma. There it says that the gospel will be preached to the whole creation. Bila sababu kwamba injili itahubiriwa kwa kila kiumbe. And then he who believes will have miracles. Na yeye atakao amini ataambatana na ishara. They will cast out demons in Jesus name and lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Watakemea mapepo kwa jina la Yesu na watawekelea mikono juu ya wagonjwa na watapokea vya njema. So the Bible tell Jesus tell us that the miracles will go to the end of the world when the gospel is being preached. Yes, Yesu akasema kwamba injili itahubiriwa hadi dunia yote nayo miujiza itaambatana na watu. Jesus did not say the miracles will stop. Yesu hakusema kwamba ati miujiza ya kukemea mapepo ati itafika mahali ikome. Jesus said the miracles will follow Christians to the end of the world when they preach the gospel to all creation. Yesu alisema kwamba miujiza itaambatana na watu wakati wote ambao bado jili na ubiriwa. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Corinthians wa kwanza 12, there it talks about spiritual gifts. Inasema juu ya gharama za za Roho Mtakatifu, including prophecy and Una, healing. Unabii uponyaji. That and then Paul did not say they will stop. Paulo hakusema kwamba Biblia haikusema kwamba hizi zitakoma. So the Bible never said that miracles will stop. Biblia haikusema kwamba miujiza na ishara zitakoma. It's some people misunderstanding. Watu wengi ni kukosa tu kuelewa mambo ya Biblia. Actually there are testimonies of miracles all over the world. Kuna ushuhuda wa miujiza ya Yesu karibu ulimwenguni mwote. And some people say well maybe miracles will follow but then 
There won't be people who have the gifts of spirit of uh, of healing and uh, miracles. Watu wengine wanasema kwamba labda miujiza itakoma na tutakuwa na watu ambao watakuwa wanatembea katika uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu. But we do see today too when lakini, people pray much. Lakini siku hizi tunaona kwamba tunapoomba sana they will have miracles and healing. Ishara na miujiza na uponyaji zinaonekana. So Now this method of evangelism he, he, the ritual, the evangelistic, that we pray for people to experience peace and joy and love and inner healing burdens go away healing and all this has to have the strong presence of God. Haya yote lazima yawe na udhihirisho mkubwa wa nguvu za Mungu. Anyone with faith would have miracles. Yoyote aliyo na imani atakuwa na miujiza. But the amount of miracles would depend on the relationship of the person with God. Lakini ishara nyingi za miujiza sitafuatana na uwepo wa karibu ulio na nguvu kwa ajili ya Mungu. When a person has weak relationship with God. Mtu akiwa na uhusiano wa Mungu ulio udhaifu There will be fewer miracles. Basi utaombea tu mtu wa malaria pekee yake ndiye anaweza kuona. When people have a strong relationship with God, watu wakiwa na nguvu zilio na nguvu na Mungu, there will be many miracles. Tutakuwa na ishara na miujiza mingi. Now for myself 95% of the, of the people I pray for, kwake yeye Asilimia tisaini na tano ya watu wale huwa anawaekea mikono. 95% will experience the Holy Spirit when I pray for them. 95% yani asilimia tisaini na tano. 5% tu ndio inakosa lakini asilimia tisaini na tano uone miujiza ifanyike. When they open the heart to God. Wanapofungua mioyo yao kwa ajili ya Bwana. And you too you can pursue na, a stronger presence of God. Na wewe pia unaweza kushuhudia uwezo mkuu wa Mungu. Now here I talk about this Evangelism method. Sasa tunazungumzia juu ya utaratibu wa uingilisi hapa. Please write it down. Sasa kama una kalamu tena utoke nje kidogo. The first is build up relationship with people. Ya kwanza ni uhusiano wa karibu na watu. Listen to them. Sikiliza watu. Respond to their needs and their feelings. Eh, kubaliana na mahitaji yao na tamanio yao. Now this is very important in our relationship. Hiyo ina maana sana katika uhusiano Many Christians have a tendency to teach have a tendency to teach people wa, wa Kristo wengi wana tabia ya kufundisha Actually teaching doesn't make people doesn't draw people to God Mafundisho hayasikia hii Mafundisho tu peke yake haisongeshi watu karibu na Mungu When people are ready for teaching we can teach. Watu wakiwa wako tayari kufundishwa vile naona nyinyi mmekaa hivi tunaweza kufundisha. But when people are not ready yet. Lakini watu kama hawajakuwa tayari kwamba wanaweza kufundishwa. And listen to them and respond to their needs and their feelings. Na uwasikize na uitikie kwa mahitaji yao. It will attract more people to Jesus. Tutaleta watu wengi kwa Yesu. I use an illustration. Ninatumia mfano. If someone has serious sickness. Mtu kama amegonjeka mpaka hata mwili umeanza kukonda or has serious family problem ama akona shida ya kifamilia ambayo ni iko na nguvu sana and you hear about the problem na wewe ukawa mchungaji ama mtumishi unasikia juu ya hiyo shida and then you say don't worry pray to god na wewe unamwambia kwamba usijali wewe omba mungu he might feel that you're not caring about his needs sasa anaona wewe 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 akili yako si sawa but if you say lakini ukisema it must be a difficult time for you lazima iwe unapitia mambo magumu That you might worry about your sickness. Kwa hivyo ninachukua mzigo kwa ajili ya magonjwa yako. Or when your family members have problems. Ama kama jamii yako iko na shida. You be unhappy. Au itakuwa huna furaha. Now, it doesn't mean I want them to continue to be unhappy. Inamaanisha kwamba sitaki kwamba waendelee kuwa katika hiyo hali. But I realize that in that situation ninatambua kwamba katika hiyo hali yao he could have unhappiness atakuwa kwamba ndani ya moyo wake hana furaha or burdens and worries ako na miziko na ako na mawazo So let me ask you Wacha nikuulize if you have some serious problem kama uko na shida ambayo ni shida kubwa sana like for instance as a pastor kama wewe mchungaji and you you have some difficulties na uko na matatizo hapa na pale and then Another person will tell you pray to God trust in God. Na mtu anakuambia tu amini tu muomba Mungu. 
or another person comes to you Ama mtu mwingine akujie wewe and says pastor i know it's difficult for you na akwambia kwamba mchungaji ninajua kwamba uko wakati na wakati mgumu you have put in much effort in uh, in the ministry umeweka uh, mawazo yako mingi kwa ajili ya huduma and now you face difficulties sasa umegumbana na mambo ambayo ni magumu now let me ask you acha nikuulize which one which response to the pastor will make the pastor feel happier haya sasa Anauliza. Kwa yule amekuambia tu kwamba amini Mungu na uombe. Na yule amekuambia kwamba pasta ninajua kwamba uko na shida, umekuwa na matatizo ingawaje umeweka moyo wako kwa ajili ya kazi ya Mungu. Kwa hiyo watu wawili, ni nani utaona kwamba anakujali? They say they say the second person who was who was Share yeah, right. with you okay. what you are going through. Yeah. So when we hear people's problem, tunaposikia watu wakiwa na shida, don't go into teaching. Ah, usiende kuwafundisha Listen to them. Wasikize hao watu and empathize with their feelings. Na uwaurumie katika mawazo yao. Feel their feelings. Hata wewe ujisikie kwamba pia wewe una una mzigo kwa ajili ya hiyo shida. And just say to ourselves. Na ujisungumzie wewe mwenyewe. If I were that person. Kama mimi ndio yule mwenye nilio na shida huyu. How would I feel? Ningejisikiaje? And then respond to the feelings of the person. Na uitikie kulingana na shida na matatizo ya huyu mtu. Now this is important for your daily life too. Hii pia ni mia muhimu kwa ajili ya maisha yako ya kila siku. For instance your child comes home and uh, uh, his uh, his school grace is not very good. Sasa mtoto wake anakuja nyumbani ajisikii mzuri na hayuko na amani. And then you say you did not study well. Unamwambia kwamba wewe hujasoma vizuri wewe. You have to study harder. Wewe unastahili usome na nguvu. You have to work harder. Now, would the child be very happy? Sasa huyo mtoto atajenga kweli. But we might have seen the child has did try. Unaona kwamba mtoto kweli hajafanya vizuri. And he's not doing so well. Hajafanya vizuri lakini amejaribu. So we can say, yeah, you did try. Na unamwambia kwamba eh mtoto umejaribu. And so now you don't have good grace you will be unhappy. Eh sasa ukiwa katika hiyo hali hatafurahia. I'll help you. Nitakusaidia. And you do better and better. Kwamba kesho ufanye vizuri na bora zaidi. Now this way people will feel comforted. Sasa huyo mtoto anajisikia kwamba amefarijika. And then also responding to your wife too. Na pia unapoongea na bibi When your wife says oh it's so hard to take care of the children. Oh mkaanga anakwambia oh ni vigumu kuangalia watoto. And then very often the wife said the husband always teach me what to do. Na naye bibi anasema kwamba huyu mwanaume kila wakati tu anataka kunifundisha kile kitu cha kufanya. But if we say to the wife Lakini tunaambia bibi I know you have taken care of been taking care of the children for a whole day. Na kwamba mama eh unajua umekuwa na kazi ngumu umeshughulika na watoto siku yote. It's very hard work. Najua kwamba hii kazi mama sio sio rahisi. I appreciate you. Kwa hivyo ninashukuru kwa hii kazi unafanya. I know you are unhappy when they don't obey you. Najua kwamba saa nyingine watoto wanapokusumbua huwa wanakasirika. That way now which way would the wife feel better? Sasa ni njia gani ambayo mke ataona kwamba anajisikia mzuri They say the, the, the second one Right So it's very important for us all Kwa hivyo ina muhimu kwetu sisi pia Especially pastors and people who serve God Sana sana wachungaji na wale watu ambao wanatumika kwa madhibao wanapomtumikia Mungu To realize that it's very important that we feel the feelings of people Kutambua hiyo kwamba unajisikia ukichukua mawazo ya watu and respond to people's feeling with comfort. Na kuitikia mahitaji yao kwa njia ya kuwafariji. So this first step of evangelism is listen to people. Hii hatua ya kwanza sasa sikia. Listen to the needs and the feelings. Sikia maoni ya watu na vile wanavyofikiria. And respond to their needs and feelings. Na uitikie kulingana na mahitaji yao. And you can say something like this. Na unasema kitu kama hii. And he, you can say after you. Na sasa yeye atazungumza kwa kizungu. Mimi nitasema kwa kwa Kiswahili na nyinyi nikishasema mtarudia nyuma yangu. Okay, so you can say oh it must be difficult for you. Unasema kwamba inaweza kuwa ni ngumu kwako. Inaweza kuwa ni ngumu kwako. I know you feel unhappy. Ninajua kwamba haujafurahia. Ninajua kwamba haujafurahia. I know some people make you feel unhappy. Unajua kwamba watu wengine wanakufanya kukasirika. Unajua watu wengine wanakufanya I know the situation is hard for you. Najua kwamba hali hii ni ngumu kwako. Watu wengine amuongei. I care about you. Ninakujali. Ninakujali. Hey. 
and I'm willing to do anything to help you. Na ninaenda kufanya lolote kukusaidia wewe. So these are things we can say to people. Haya ni mambo ambayo tunaweza kuzungumza kwa watu to make them feel accepted. Kwamba wajisikie kwamba pia wao wamekubalika. And understood. Na wameeleweka. And then number 2. Na zala pili. We can share some of our similar experiences. Sasa tunaweza kushiriki pamoja nao yale mambo ambayo sisi pia kama watumishi tumeyapitia. Or some people similar experience. Ah uh, hata ushuhuda wa watu wengine and then they got help from God. Sasa wanapata usaidizi kutoka kwa Mungu. Or when we pray for people they experience the help from God. Ama tunapoombea watu wanapata usaidizi kutoka kwa Mungu. And then number 3, Latatu sasa, we ask the person are you willing to I pray for you? Sasa unajisikia kwamba bwana mtaro tunaweza kuomba pamoja na wewe? Yes. That, that the blessings of God will come to you. Kwamba uwepo wa Mungu kakujilie juu yako. Yes. And then when a person is open, naye mtu huyo akiwa ako wazi na moyo wake umekubali, then you will tell them, Sasa utamwambia, God loves you very much. Unamwambia kwamba Mungu anakupenda sana. God wants to bless you. Mungu anahitaji kukubariki. So open your heart to God. Kwa hivyo fungua moyo wako kwa Mungu. Hunger for God. Uwe na tamanio kwa Mungu and relax. Na utulie kabisa. And believe that God wants to help you. Na uamini kwamba Mungu anataka kukubariki. So you help the person to open the heart to God. Sasa unasaidia mtu huyu kufungua moyo kwa Mungu. And then you yourself open your heart to God. Na wewe pia si unaambia mtu na wewe umemkasia tu macho. So if you pray every day to experience the Holy Spirit. Unapoomba kila wakati kwa ajili ya kushuhudia nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. And lead the church members to pray together much. Na kuongoza washiriki wa, wa, wa kanisa kuomba kwa Mungu sana. And to practice praying for people. Na kwa ajili ya kufanya zoezi la kuombea watu. Then you get used to the presence of God. Na sasa unatumika katika uwepo wa Mungu. And, and then when you pray for this person, napoomba mtu huyu, you yourself would believe that God loves you. Wewe mwenyewe umaamini kwamba Mungu anakupenda. God wants to bless us. Mungu anataka kutubariki. And use us to bless the person. Anataka kututumia kubariki watu. So in a prayer don't talk too much. Kwa hivyo kwa kuomba usipike kelele na kuongea mambo mengi. It's not the prayer of the mouth. Sio kwamba tu ni kelele ya mdomo. But our spirit will ascend to God. Ni roho iliyo miminwa kwa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God Mambo kama hiyo. Good. Mungu ni mwema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now notice how I use my voice. Sasa hivi ndivyo anayetumia sauti yake. It's like the voice came from my belly. Sasa sauti inatoka ndani ya chemichemi ya moyo. Also my heart ascend to God. Moyo wake unamsongea Mungu karibu. Hallelujah. Kitu kama hiyo. Oh yes. Hallelujah. So I pray from the spirit. Oh, thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Now when I talk, ninapoongea, the voice will be coming out from my belly. Sauti inatoka ndani ya moyo. Hallelujah. Hey, inatoka ndani ya moyo. Praise the Lord. Sio ya kelele. And then after the prayer, baada ya maombi, you say this. Nasema hivi. Please say it after him. Sasa nitasema atasema na mimi nitasema na nyinyi mtasema nyuma yangu. You will say please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Sasa unaambia mtu huyu, funika macho. Ume umeshuhudia neno lolote katika maombi. Tell them the same. Bora nyuma wanje wasi advantage. Funika macho. Sasa unamwambia funika macho. Funika macho. Watu waongee nyuma yangu tafadhali. Unamwambia funika macho. Funika macho. Umeshuhudia neno lolote wakati wa maombi. Umeshuhudia neno lolote wakati wa maombi. Now why do I ask people to close their eyes? Kwa nini waulize wafunike macho? Because if they open their eyes they will be distracted. Wakati umefunua macho unaweza kuona hata puzi zikipita huko nje. So I want them to stay in the prayer mode. Kwa hivyo wanataka ubaki katika hali ya kimaombi. So continue to close your eyes and concentrate in Jesus. Kwa hivyo unaendelea kufunika macho na kumtegemea Bwana Yesu. Why do I ask them what they experienced? Kwa nini waulize kile ambao wameshuhudia? They might have experienced the work of God. Wanaweza kuwa wameshuhudia nguvu za Mungu. If they, we, we, if we don't ask them, na tusipowauliza, they might forget about it. What does how do we know that mambo ya kawaida? They just say I don't know why I cried at that time. Wanasema kwamba hata mimi sijui leo nilikuwa nalia nini. 
And when the peace goes, uh, when the peace, you know, gradually goes away, they would forget about the peace they have experienced. Wakati amani imetoka ndani yao, watasahau habari ambayo ilipokuwepo wakati walikuwa na so, na amani ndani ya mioyo. So it's important to ask them right then. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri kuwauliza wakati huo huo. But many people are afraid to ask. Lakini watu wengi huwa wanaogopa kuuliza. They will say, what if they haven't experienced anything? Sasa kama hawajaona chochote. Then I'll feel very bad. Sasa nitakuwa kwamba nimeahibika mimi. If the person says I haven't experienced anything, mtu akisema kwamba sijashuhudia neno lolote, you can say well pay attention to your heart and your body. Unawaambia kwamba muwe waangalifu kwa ajili ya mili zenu na mioyo. Unauliza kwamba umesikia amani yoyote ndani yako? Ah miziko ikikuondokea. Comfort to the body. Ah faraja kwa mwili. Because some people sometimes don't know what to look for. Watu wengine hawajui la ya kuangalia. And then if the person says I still haven't experienced anything. Mtu anaposema kwamba hajashuhudia ama hajaona neno lolote. Then you say it doesn't matter. Naambia kwamba haijalishi. When you continue to pray to God. Unapoendelea kuomba Mungu. He will continue to bless you. Ataendelea kukubariki. So we need to accept that sometimes people don't accept experience the Holy Spirit. Ni lazima pia wachungaji tukubali kwamba kuna wakati ambapo mtu hawezi kuhisi chochote. But if they experience the work of God, na iwapo wanahisi nguvu za Mungu. Then we use the Bible verses I gave you. Sasa tunatumia mistari ya Biblia ambayo tumewapa. And said, wow, the peace is from Jesus. Naambia kwamba amani hutokana na Mungu. Jesus took away your burdens. Mungu amechukua mizigo yako. Jesus comfort your soul. Mungu amefariji moyo wako. Heal your broken heartedness. Ame am ametakaza moyo wako uliokuwa umefunjika and give you joy na amekupatia furaha and also make your body feel comfortable na amekufanya mwili wako kutulia or very light ama uwe mwepezi or some people feel like floating watu wengine waisikia ni kama wana 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 paa so that's like in heaven wanachisikia tu ni kama wako mbinguni so you quote this bible verses to them unaweza kutafakari maandiko haya ndani yao and then you say Please write this down. Sasa andika hii bwana tafadhali. Jesus has blessed you like this. Yesu anapenda mambo haya. Do you want Jesus to continue to bless you? Unataka Yesu aendelee kukubariki. If the person is willing, kama mtu anajisikia, then you explain about Jesus dying on the cross. Au unaeleza juu ya Yesu akikufa msalabani. How God loves us and wants to save us. Vile Mungu anatupenda na anahitaji kutu kutuokoa. And lead them to to believe uh, to say you know pray together to accept Jesus as your savior. Na uongoze kwa kuomba kuamini Mungu kama mwokozi wa maisha yao. And then after the prayer you ask them have you sincerely prayed this prayer? Baada ya maombi unawaambia kwamba waombe nyuma ya ombi hili. Have you sincerely asked Jesus to forgive you and give you eternal life? Umeomba Mungu kwamba atupatie uzima wa milele? If he says yes. Akisema ndio. Then you congratulate him. Sasa unaweza kumalizia and say when you sincerely repent and trust in Jesus unamwambia kwamba unapotubu na kumwamini Yesu now you are a christian now sasa you sasa have... umekuwa mkristo and then also teach him how to follow god sasa unawafundisha jinsi ya kumfuata mungu okay so this is the evangelism method hii ndio uh, utaratibu wa uingilisti and then if the person is a christian na kama huyu mtu ako na swali lolote la kuuliza after the person experience the holy spirit baada ya mtu kushuhudia uwezo wa mtakatifu you can say you know you can carry the power of god unaweza kubeba uwezo wa mungu to bless people kwa ajili ya kubariki watu do you want to be used by god to bless people na uliza kwamba unataka kutumiwa na mungu kwa ajili ya kubariki watu that way you can raise up christians to serve god sasa unaweza kuwauliza maswali ya kumtumikia mungu I have raised the people to to become ministers. Nimeinua watu kuwa watumishi wa injili. And missionaries. Na wa missionary pia. After I pray for them. Baada ya kuwaombea. Okay, right now I want to demonstrate this with one man and one woman. Anyone want to willing to come out? Sasa tunataka kufanya zoezi kwa mama mmoja na mzee mmoja. Mama mmoja anayejisikia kwamba aje na mzee mmoja. Okay anyone one Hello. man and one woman I demonstrate this method of Hello. evangelism Hello. 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 Mama mmoja na mzee mmoja Thank you Thank you Thank you And a woman Ita ino mwana waje Okay Okay with me Please 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 Please
Mama mmoja kuja. Mama you don't have to tell her. You don't have to tell her. Whoever wants to come. Come. Mama Mama Come here. Come. 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 So we just come to the point of the prayer. Uh, uh, please come forward. Mama, come forward. We are almost here. Okay. Now, don't step back. Relax. God is real. God is real. Mungu ni wa ni wa kweli. God wants to bless you. Mungu anataka kuwabariki. So open your heart to God. Sasa fungueni mioyo yenu kwa ajili ya Mungu. And hunger for God. Muwe na tamanio kwa Mungu. Please close your eyes. Sasa funika macho timba timono mkano wazi. Close your eyes. Okay? And then and I tell you uh, open your heart to God and appreciate God. Ah, uh, fungua moyo wako na umshukuru Bwana. And then for myself I would Believe that God is blessing me right now. God is with us now. And I open my heart to love God. And believe that God is loving me. And God is blessing them. So I have my spirit ascend to God. And then I will lay hand on them. And then I'll lay hand on them. But I will ask them, is it okay that I lay my hand on you? I'll ask them, is it okay for me to lay my hand on you? Is it okay? Uh, she said, she said it's okay. Okay. And then I would really reach out to God. And believe God is working here. And then I lay hand. Now, if you can feel the presence of God, before you lay hand, that is the best. Now, please stand up. You can have your eyes open. But I want you to stay in a prayer condition. 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 Stay in that you'll be praying to God in your heart, not with voice. Hallelujah. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Now notice my prayer. It's very simple. And I don't speak very fast. I just reach out my heart to God. Thank you, Jesus. Please bless this brother, this friend. Come to him. And take away his burdens. Come, Lord Jesus, to bless him. Bless him in his heart. Give him comfort. And bless his whole life. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when I pray for you, it's better that you don't speak that. I'm saying in general. Anasema kwa ujumla kwamba anapokuombea usitamke maneno kwa kinywa. Tamka maneno ndani ya moyo wako. Try not to enter just a thinking mode. Yaani uingue tu katika hali ya kutafakari. But think of Jesus in front of us. Sasa hisi kwamba Yesu ako mbele yako. Think of our spirit ascending to God. Ujisikie kwamba roho wa Mungu roho wako anainuka kwa ajili ya Bwana. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus.
Jesus loves me. I tell her not to say anything. Oh, what is it? The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I stand to you. I worship you, Father. We love you. You are so wonderful. Hallelujah. We need Jesus. Please open our hearts to accept you as our Savior, to be blessed by you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loves us very much. God wants to bless us. God wants to help us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now please, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Okay. Uh, what have you experienced? Can you speak? Can you speak louder, please? Uh, she says she had some power coming out of her and then some some soft power coming into her. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise yes. the Lord. Amen. So how do you feel in your heart? Sasa ndani moyo wako unasikiaje? Anasikia kuna amani. She feels she has peace. Uh -huh. So that is God coming to bless you. Sasa huyo ni Mungu anashuka kwa ile kubariki. That Jesus has give, given you peace. Baba Mungu amekupatia amani. And Jesus has given you power. Na Yesu amekupatia nguvu. Do you feel, feel comfort over your body? Sasa mwili wako unaisikia ukiwa umepesi? So that is what Jesus said, that what the Bible said, that our body will rest secure. So God has blessed you like this. Do you want him to continue bless you? Hallelujah, thank you. Now, I'll ask him first. Now, friend, have you experienced anything during the prayer? She, he has felt a lot of peace in, her, in his heart. He has felt peace. Peace. Yes. Peace. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's Joy. what Jesus said, you know, peace he will give to Joy. us. Joy. Yeah. Now I saw, I see tears on your eyes too. And I wonder how much was your king in your name, how much So how are you feeling? So I wonder if you have any other people. And I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, he said he has been overloaded in his, in his heart, in his mind, but now he feels he's being released. Hallelujah. So Jesus took away your burdens. Uh, so you see how real God is. Vile mungu that he came to heal the broken heart. Now you have seen how God is real. How he blessed both of you. So are you willing to let Jesus bless your whole life? Yeah, very good. You know Jesus loves us so much. He's the son of God. And he came to the world. To die for our sins on the cross. To be punished for our sins. So we don't have to be punished. So we can have eternal life. Do you want Jesus to forgive your sins? So that you have eternal life? Can you follow me in a prayer? To ask Jesus to forgive you. And give you eternal life. Now, if you sincerely pray this prayer, 
God will give you eternal life. Yesu atakupatia uzima wa milele. Okay. So we we'll pray now. Sasa tutaomba pamoja nanyi. Dear Jesus. Um, Yesu mpendwa. You can say it together. Naweza kusema wote. Yesu mpendwa. We thank you. Tunakushukuru. That you have blessed us in the prayer. Kwamba umetubariki katika maombi. You have given us peace. Umetupatia amani. You have heal our broken heart uh heal our, our burdens umetuponya na mizigo zetu and heal our hearts na umeponya mioyo yetu and give us comfort na umetupatia faraja thank you for your love asante kwa upendo wako i know that you are a real god na mjua kwamba wewe ni mungu wa kweli i want to accept jesus as my savior nataka kukubali yesu kama mwokozi i'm a sinner I've sinned against you. And I've sinned against other people. I have had anger. I have told lies. I've hurt people's feelings. Please forgive our sins. And wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. And give us eternal life. Thank you Jesus. I love you Jesus. I love you heavenly Father. I want to follow God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let me ask you. Have you sincerely prayed this prayer? Yeah, very good. Then you are a child of God already. Congratulations. Are you willing to continue to follow Jesus? I can teach you a, a, a simple prayer. So you can pray after me. A simple prayer that you can remember. Because the prayer just now was too long, so I want to teach a simple prayer. And you too can teach new Christians. And you can teach new Christians. Okay. Close your eyes and say after me. Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins and give me eternal life. Thank you. Asante. I worship you, God. Please bless my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now this simple prayer is asking Jesus to forgive us and ask Jesus to give us eternal life and ask Jesus to bless us and thank God and love God. So you can say that every day. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, do you want to say anything more about, you know, how your heart feel? You know, I see that your tears came out. You want to say more? Can you speak louder? Uh-huh. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. What is he He's saying praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, I would like to say eh, siku ya leo, and, uh, on his behalf this day was sought after him. But I want to thank God. Uh, he had a problem at home. Uh, the child is very sick. Alafu kuna yani mambo mengine hatu ya hatu ya sisi kama familia. And there are things that they have not solved as a family. Kwa hivyo itisababisha itisababisha shida. So it, it created a problem into my heart. Uh, therefore niliita watumishi wa Mungu kuja kuomba pamoja na mimi. So I called the servants of God to come and pray with me. Na walikuja tukaomba asubuhi. And when they came and prayed in the morning, na ninaziti kuona mkono wa Mungu mama maana hata si kutarajia tunaweza kuwa kwa mkutano wa leo na uh, I keep on thanking God because I didn't expect to be in this meeting today. Kwa hivyo nina 
ona nikiwa nimefunguliwa juu ile usito niliyokuwa nao moyoni i see myself being released because the the burden that i had in my heart naona kama at least mungu anatenda kitu katika i find that god is setting me free from the bondages yes hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah god is good god is good hallelujah hallelujah thank you thank you and God bless your child. Mungu abariki mtoto wako. We pray that God will heal your child. Tunaomba kwamba Mungu ataponya mtoto wako. And your child too. Na mtoto wako pia. Now, at this point I like to pray for you. Wakati huu sasa tutapenda kuomba pamoja na nani? Experience the Holy Spirit. Kwamba mkaweze kutambua uwepo wa Mungu. And later we might, you know, I, I don't know how the time is, but later that I'll lead you to practice praying for each other. Sasa atawaongoza kwa ajili ya kufuafundisha jinsi watu wanaweza kuombea watu wengine. So the first is to pray for you to experience the Holy Spirit. Jambo la kwanza ni kuwaombea kwamba mkaweze kuhisi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. I hope you hunger for God. Najua kwamba mna tamanio kwa Mungu. And open your heart to God. Ufungue moyo wako kwa ajili ya Mungu. Believe that God is loving you. Amini kwamba Mungu anakupenda. And I hope that at all times you believe that God is loving you all the time. Najua kwamba kila wakati unapoamini kwamba Mungu anakupenda kila wakati huo. Christians don't have to live in pain and burdens. Usaidi kuishi katika maswali na katika mizigo. He will help you. Yeye atakusaidia. The reason why we have pain and suffering sababu ambayo tuko na uchungu na mateso is because after Adam sin baada ya Adam kutenda dhambi then everyone suffer basi kila mtu yote anapitia katika shida but when you come to god lakini unapomkujia mungu he'll help you yeye atakusaidia so believe that god is loving you right now basi amini kwamba mungu anakupenda sasa every time you pray kila wakati unapoomba don't say god where are you usiulize mungu anakuwa wapi mungu kila wakati anakuanga juu but believe that he really wants to bless you waamini tu kwamba yeye hakika anataka kubariki he's seeking you yeye anakutafuta i want to bless you na anataka kubariki and give you joy and peace so I hope you come with with faith. Never say God where are you? But say Lord you are blessing me now. You are loving me now. It's so wonderful. Hallelujah. Ah.